It's called the parable of the mustard seed, and it's found in three of the four Gospels in the New Testament. I'm not convinced that it started out as a parable, so I'm going to try tracing it back through time as best we can to find its origins in the life of Jesus. In Matthew and Luke, this parable is coupled with the one about leaven. In Mark, it's paired with the parable about seed time and harvest. That parable, which only Mark uses, helps to reveal an often missed implication. With its emphasis on harvest, that parable could well be taken as having an apocalyptic edge to it. Did Mark take the parable of the mustard seed in the same way? There's no clear answer to that, but it is clear that all three gospel writers viewed the story of Jesus through an apocalyptic lens. This becomes obvious when you look at how the mustard plant grows with the telling of the parable. In Mark, it becomes the biggest of all garden plants, while in Matthew, it grows into the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree. Finally, in Luke, it grew and became a tree. This phenomenal growth was influenced by images from Ezekiel and Daniel. The first prophet hears how God will take a tender twig as a cutting to plant on a high and lofty mountain where it will produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar under which every kind of bird will live. And Daniel, interpreting a dream of Nebuchadnezzar, calls to mind a great and strong tree whose top reached to heaven and was visible to the end of the earth. The prophet flatters the king by telling him that he is that tree, because he has grown great and strong, and his greatness has increased and reaches to heaven, and his sovereignty to the ends of the earth. These images fed the desire to understand God's imperial rule in similar terms. So the mustard plant grew into a mighty tree. But again, is that what Jesus intended? To move closer to Jesus' intention, we have to turn to another gospel, one that didn't make it into the New Testament. The Gospel of Thomas takes a very different slant on the story of Jesus. Like Matthew and Luke, Thomas has both the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven. Unlike those others, however, the parables are not together. What's more interesting, Thomas's version of the parable is much more realistic. The mustard seed grows into a large plant that may serve as a shelter for the birds of the sky. This more realistic view of the parable has led some scholars to consider Thomas's version the original. Now I'm going to make a couple of digressions. First, into the typical understanding of the kingdom of God, and then get real about mustard plants. Building on the Old Testament stories of the kingdom of Saul, David, and Solomon, combined with apocalyptic visions from some of the prophets, Many people in Jesus' culture saw God's kingdom as vast and eternal, as a coming reality that will change everything. This image developed in part as a foil against the Roman Empire. Few in Jesus' environment knew the full extent of the empire. In fact, I suspect only some of the elite and some soldiers and probably somewhat more merchants had traveled enough to experience Rome's far-flung boundaries. But that didn't matter. 
To the people who believed God created everything and manipulates all events and knows all that happens, nothing could compare with the divine realm. Now to the mustard seed. The mustard seed was proverbial for its small size, even though there are in fact smaller seeds. All I had to do was go to our collection of herbs and spices to find a mustard seed and a poppy seed to prove the point. But that's also not the point. People in Jesus' culture knew the mustard plant as a weed. While they made use of mustard, most did not want it running loose in their gardens. In any event, Jesus is not making a flattering comparison. And that, I think, is intentional. Jesus is poking fun at those who think some vast, ephemeral, and fluffy abstraction is more real than the immediate need to accept other human beings as equals and to find ways to live comfortably with their neighbors. Jesus, I think, was annoyed by the zealots of his time who took refuge in such absurdities. I can easily imagine one such person coming to Jesus and asking, what is the kingdom of God like? To which Jesus responds, eh, the God's kingdom is like a mustard seed. And he moves on, leaving the zealot wheeling in the dust. In other words, Jesus presented an aphorism, not a parable, and he stunned the zealot. It's a great tragedy that later generations chose to interpret Jesus as an apocalyptic preacher and turned his aphorism into a weird parable. By doing so, they intentionally misinterpreted Jesus and chose to shift his emphasis. I think Jesus understood God's kingdom more as God's kingdom, that is, as a set of positive values innate to our humanity that we may choose to activate in our relationships with others. In other words, it's the weed that grows wherever the followers of Jesus share their humanity with their neighbors.